You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on circular and satellite motion. The topic of this video is satellite motion principles, and we want to know what is a satellite and how can you describe the velocity, acceleration, and net force of a satellite. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. A satellite is any object that is orbiting the Earth, the Sun, or other massive body. The planets and our moon are examples of natural satellites. Human-made satellites include the space shuttle, global positioning satellites, and communication satellites. Once a satellite is launched into orbit, it continues along its orbital path, acted upon by only one force, the force of gravity. In this sense, it, a satellite is a projectile. Isaac Newton popularized the so-called Newton's Mountain Thought Experiment. In his thought experiment, he imagined a very tall mountain whose top was 60 miles above the surface of the Earth, above the influence of air resistance. And on top of that mountain was a cannon that would shoot a cannonball at high speed horizontally. In the absence of gravity, such a cannonball would continue tangent to the Earth along a straight line path. But because of gravity, the cannonball falls below that tangential path and eventually lands on the surface of the Earth. Newton imagined that perhaps you could increase the speed at which the cannonball is launched, it would still fall below its tangent path, but would travel further outwards before it finally fell and struck the Earth. He imagined that there could be such a speed that you could fire the cannonball at, that it would fall towards the Earth, but never land on the Earth. Relative to the straight line tangent path at every point along its trajectory, it would begin to fall, but never touch the Earth because its curvature matched the curvature of the Earth. And then he imagined that you could fire it a little faster still, and such a cannonball would make an elliptical path around the surface of the Earth. Newton's Mountain Thought Experiment teaches us that a satellite is a projectile that falls around the Earth without ever falling into the Earth. To illustrate the idea, consider this projectile launched horizontally from the position of the red dot. In the absence of gravity, this projectile would travel tangent to the Earth and end up at location 1 prime. But because of the influence of gravity pulling it downwards, instead it's at location 1 and traveling tangent to the circular path. Sometime later, this projectile in the absence of gravity would be located at position 2 prime, but because of the influence of gravity pulling it downwards, it's located at position 2 instead, again traveling tangent to the circular path. And because of that, sometime later in the absence of gravity, it would be located at position 3 prime, but again gravity pulls it downwards and it's located at position 3 instead, and then traveling tangent to the, cir to the circular path. Now this thought experiment could continue, and what we have is a projectile projectile that is launched horizontally at such a high speed that it falls towards the Earth but never falls into the Earth. In order to have a satellite make a circular path around the Earth, its curvature must match the curvature of the Earth. If you were to stand on Earth's surface and look out horizontally along the surface of the Earth, you would note that for every 8,000 meters horizontally, the Earth curves downwards 5 meters. The significance of 5 meters is that's the distance that a projectile falls in one second. So if you could shoot a projectile that travels 8,000 meters horizontally in one second, it would fall downwards towards the Earth but never touch the Earth. There are no special laws of physics that apply just to satellites. Instead, the very laws that apply to any object that's moving in a circle or along a curved path also applies to satellites. Some of those laws have to do with the vector nature of the velocity, acceleration, and net force. Here is a diagram of an Earth-orbiting satellite orbiting in a circular path. And at every location along the circle, the direction of the velocity vector is directed tangent to the circle and the direction of the acceleration and net force vectors are perpendicular to the path and directed towards the center of the Earth. When an Earth-orbiting satellite is put into orbit at 8,000 meters per second, it travels around the Earth in a circular orbit. But if launched with a speed greater than 8,000 meters per second and less than about 11.2 kilometers per second, our Earth-orbiting satellite will orbit with an elliptical path as shown. At every location along that path, the direction of the velocity vector is tangent to the path. But the magnitude of the velocity vector is constantly varying. As you'll note here, the, direct, the magnitude is greatest when the satellite is closest to the Earth, and the velocity is smallest when the satellite is 
furthest from the Earth. As for the acceleration in net force vectors, those are gravity influenced vectors, and so they're always directed towards the center of the circle at all points along the pathway of this elliptical orbit. The direction is always inward, but the magnitude is varying, as you'll see in the diagram, and influenced by the law of universal gravitation. When the satellite is closest to the Earth, the force of gravity and the acceleration that it causes is largest, and when the satellite is furthest from the Earth, the force of gravity and the acceleration it causes is smallest. An elliptically orbiting Earth satellite is changing its speed as it travels along the orbital path from location 4 to location 1, it's increasing its speed. And as it travels along its elliptical path from location 1 to location 4, it's decreasing its speed. But why? Why would a satellite change its speed? Well, one quick and incorrect answer would be to say it's changing its speed in the way it does because the size of the force is changing. But that's not correct. The change in speed from location 1 to location 4 is caused because the direction of the force is opposite the direction of the motion. Not exactly opposite the direction of the motion, but there's a component of the force of gravity that's tugging the satellite back towards the Earth as the satellite's trying to move away from the Earth. And whenever there's a component of force that's against the motion, it causes the satellite to slow down. And while the satellite moves from location 4 to location 1, it's speeding up. It's actually moving back towards the Earth. And the pull of gravity is also in that same direction, tugging it in the direction that it's traveling. And whenever there's a component of force in the direction of motion, it causes the satellite to speed up. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a Minds on Physics mission, which is perfect practice. You have a simulation that allows you to change a variable and observe the result. And you have a written tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.